Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice equation for integers. And we're going to be finding the value of a plus b. So we have a plus 2ab plus b equals 8. a and b are integers. And we're supposed to evaluate a plus b. So let's go ahead and take a look at it from a factoring perspective. First of all, if I consider the first two terms and take out an a, that's going to give me 1 plus 2b, or not 2b, right? But that's not good because it's not followed by a 2b, it's just 2b and b, so they're not really consistent. So here's what I'd like to do then. I want to make sure that I factor out a term such that I have a b inside instead of 2b. And that can be achieved by factoring out 2a instead of a. Is 2a a common factor? Yeah, kind of. If you are okay with fractions, which is something we're going to use, then 2a would be okay. So let's go ahead and take out a 2a. Now inside the parentheses, what should we have? So 2a multiplied by what equals a? That's the question you need to ask if you're factoring by greatest common factor. And the answer would be 1 half plus, this one is a little easier, 2a times what equals 2ab? The answer is b. And then it'll be followed by another b and that equals 8. Now our goal is to get a common factor because we're going to be factoring by grouping basically. That's what we're trying to do here. And we got our first group. And first group has b plus 1 half. We don't have a 1 half here, but we can always add that to both sides. So let's go ahead and do the following. Write this one as b plus 1 half. And then add 1 half to both sides. By the way, there's an alternative approach. If you don't want to go through this, I'll briefly talk about it. Now, we have b plus 1 half, and obviously, to find the common factor, we can go ahead and write this as 1 times b plus 1 half. That is equal to 8 plus 1 half, which can be written as 17 halves. Now, we know that b plus 1 half is a common factor, right? So we can take it out. b plus 1 half multiplied by 2a plus 1. That's how you write the second factor. So this concludes the factoring part. But the issue is we have a b and 1 half, and, but we have a 2a here. So they're not really kind of compatible. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. So the presence of a fraction on the right-hand side also gives you a clue. Multiplying both sides by 2 is a good idea. And if you go ahead and distribute the 2 here, you get 2b plus 1 multiplied by 2a plus 1 equals 17. As you should know, 17 is a prime number. So what, what is that supposed to mean? It means that when you factor it into, uh, you know, the product of two integers, then those can be 1 and 17, the number itself, and 1, but you also need to consider the negatives because we are looking for integers, not just positive integers. If you were looking for positive integer solutions, then you would just consider 17 times 1 and 1 times 17. But we're going to look at four different cases. Make sense? And we're supposed to find x plus y, uh, I'm sorry, a plus b at the end, x plus y. So here's the other approach. Well, let me finish this first, and then I'll talk about the other approach. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to write, OK, this can be 17 times 1 or 1 times 17, or negative 17 times negative 1, or negative 1 times negative 17. Obviously, these two cases are interchangeable, so if you find the pair a comma b, then you could always switch them around, because that would give you um, the same thing. So in this case, it doesn't matter, because we're going to get the same, we're going to get the same a plus b value. So you could also verify that by adding these two terms, 2b plus 1 plus 2a plus 1 gives you 2 times a plus b plus 2. And we know that it's always 17 plus 1 for these cases, and that's going to be 18. And if you subtract 2 and divide by 2, you'll get the answer. Make sense? So that wouldn't matter if you just use one of them. Having said that, let's go ahead and take a look at this one and this one, since it doesn't matter. So from here, I get b equals 8. And from the second one, I get a equals 0, which means a plus b is equal to 8. That's one of the values. And from the second one, from the negatives, I get if 2b plus 1 is equal to negative 17, that means 2b is equal to negative 18, which means b is equal to negative 9. And 2a plus 1 equals negative 1 means 
a is equal to negative 1. And their sum is going to be negative 10 in this case. So we have two values for a plus b, and those values are 8 and negative 10. Again, if you use the other pair, it won't make a difference. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative way to solve this problem real quick, and then we'll finish up. So instead of dealing with fractions here, because we kind of had to take out a 2a and then we had to deal with fractions, you could also do the following. You could multiply both sides by 2. That would give you 2a plus 4ab plus 2b equals 16. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and since you are, your goal is to get a common factor, and notice that if I divide 4ab by 2b, by this, then I should be getting 2a, and 2a is right here. So we can take out a 2a, that's going to give us 2b plus 1, and then plus 2b, and then plus 1, 17, and you'll get the same idea. And from there, you'll arrive at the exact same equation, so the solutions will be the same. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Actually, not tomorrow. I'll see you soon. How about next time with another video? Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.